Yes, I do want a smokery. Big thanks to Kamada Joe for sponsoring this episode. What is a smokery? And do you actually need one? A while ago, I had the joy of cooking the best brisket out of my life. It was a beautiful wakio brisket that I cooked with the 4-2-10 method. I put it on an electric smoker. It turned out so fantastic. All the hard fat was rendered out, making it extremely juicy. This is my best brisket ever. It tasted freaking delicious. I had good smoke flavor. I had a beautiful bark. It was juicy, it was tender, but there was something wrong with my perfect brisket. I got so many comments on that video telling me there was no smoke ring. And that's absolutely correct. There was no smoke ring whatsoever on this brisket. So I have a vague idea of what's causing that smoke ring to occur and what causes it not to occur. But I wanted to fully understand what was going on. And I went online and the best resource that I found was on amazingribs.com. <laughs> on that website, there's an article that's based on the research of Dr. Blonder. In his research, he found that nitric oxide together with carbon monoxide mixed with myoglobin create a beautiful pink smoke ring. However, it's very interesting to understand that in meat, there is something called myoglobin. Hyd hydrous methem methamine. That myoglobin is the stuff that reacts. It's the red part of the meat. So if you're cooking meat and you're bringing it up to temperature and you're going over 75 degrees Celsius, it turns gray. Ta-da! Do you recognize that from overcooked steaks? So then the question raises, why do I have a smoke ring for my briskets that come from the Kamada Joe? And why don't I have a smoke ring on the brisket that comes from my electric smoker? It all has to do with the fuel source. If you're burning to create heat, that fire that's burning is gonna create those particles. It's gonna create that nitric oxide and that carbon monoxide. I'm cooking on my Kamado Joe and I got my lump charcoal. That fire alone is creating those particles. Even though lump charcoal is a very clean burning fuel, it creates some of those particles. And of course, I add smoke wood to it. And that smoke wood burns. So it actually doesn't have to give you any smoke, but when it slowly burns down, it's gonna give off more of those particles creating that smoke ring. Whereas if you compare that to an electric smoker, it's an electric heating element that creates that heat. Of course, that electric smoker still burns some wood chips, but it creates such a small amount of nitric oxide and carbon monoxide that it almost has no effect on the brisket. And you definitely can't see a smoke ring from those amounts, which in itself is a good thing because you're not adding particles that you not necessarily need. On the other hand, I kind of like barbecue. And one of the telltale signs of good barbecue is a smoke ring because that brisket was the best brisket I cooked in my life. Flavor was absolutely on point. So it's kind of sad that that brisket gets judged on a smoke ring while it actually didn't need one. Now, all of this is very, very confusing. At least it is to me because I want to love my smoke ring. I want to have that beautiful quarter inch thick smoke ring. I just want to, you know, cherish it and say that's a real sign of good barbecue. But in reality, it's kind of like a false sign. You gotta put it in your mouth and you gotta taste it to know if it's good or not. That smoke ring that a lot of barbecue competitions get judged on, it's not the real thing. But there are some tricks that you can apply to make your smoke ring better. One of the tricks that we apply is removing the fat cap you're gonna have more exposure to that smoke and you're gonna have a bigger, more beautiful and perfect smoke ring. Another trick is to spray your brisket, creating a more moist bark. And that moist bark will attract more particles. It will stick to it more easily. Therefore, there's more chemicals. There's more nitric oxide and carbon monoxide to connect, to interact with the myoglobin and create your beautiful smoke ring. And now that I know what the science is behind it, and you know what the science is behind it, we kind of are having a myth busted. A myth that we love so much. Do you need a smoke ring? You really don't need a smoke ring. 
Is that kind of sad? Yes, that's kind of sad. Do I like it? No, I don't like it. Do I want a smoke ring? Yes, I do want a smoke ring because it just looks so good on my brisket. <laughs>